So reviewing here, we're trying to use these G-bombs in our diet almost every day. We can throw a dart at any of these foods and describe its magnificent anti-cancer longevity benefits. But cruciferous vegetables are the major, the utilization of cruciferous vegetables regularly, both raw and cooked, is another hallmark of what makes a nutritarian diet unique because of the strong relationship between the anti-cancer effects and the longevity promoting effects of cruciferous vegetables on lifespan and promoting us to our achievement to live to be, to live to be 100 years old. The highest quintile of cruciferous vegetable intake has the longest lived people and cruciferous vegetables that remember have that cell membrane with that myrosinase in the membrane of the cell that then when you're chewing it, you're breaking open those little packets of myrosinase, mixing it with the clasinolates forming the isothiocyanates in your mouth. And the better you chew and leave here with the message that you have to liquefy your salad when you chew it in the don't, that make sure you liquefy every mouthful. And now we're going on to making a soup and I'm gonna discuss how to make this anti-cancer soup because if you can make this soup, you can use the same methodology to understand the principles to make other soups. The point is we're learning that the myrosinase enzyme is heat sensitive. So when I'm adding it to the soup, I wanna take my bok choy or my broccoli rob or my mustard greens or my collard greens, whatever greens I choose, usually not kale, because my kids and family are eating so much kale otherwise that I would like to pick a different type of cruciferous green to utilize in the soup because it's not gonna be noticed the flavor of it that much anyway. So the secret here, what makes it this anti-cancer soup and what makes you understand how I want you to cook it is I want you to take the green vegetable and I want you to blend it down into the blender while it's still raw. So you're breaking open those compounds so the myrosinase is intact and forms the ITCs in the blender. And then you can pour it into the soup to cook. So let me review. The first thing you did is you soaked your beans overnight. Then you put two quarts of water in a soup bowl and it's in a big pot, two quarts of water in and put your beans up to cook. Take your split peas and you put them in a separate pot, not in the same pot with the beans. Maybe put your cup of split peas and two or three cups of water into a separate pot to cook because they're gonna cook quicker than the beans. You're gonna cook, cover the beans and let them simmer now slowly. Of course, you soak them overnight, you rinse them off and you put fresh water in the pot. You didn't use the soaking water from overnight to put in the pot, you use new water in the pot when you're cooking your beans in a low flame. And now I have my peas cooking in a separate pot and then once I get that cooking, now I can take my five pound bag of carrots and juice my celery and my carrots to make my stock. And I can take maybe a couple of quarts of vegetable stock made with carrot juice and celery juice and pour that into the pot now to cook. And now I'll put the, take the juicer and clean it and put it away. And now I'll take my Vitamix blender out and I'll take my green cruciferous, the bok choy, the collard greens, the broccoli rob, the you know, mustard greens, whatever cabbage, whatever green you're gonna choose in your soup, you're gonna put that, ladle a little of the liquid that's cooking in the soup in there. Not too much, don't make it too watery, just to make this puree of greens so we can let the chemical reaction that forms the isothiocyanates form in the blender. And then I can take this green puree and pour that into the base of the soup leave my blender dirty now and take my leek or my onion. Don't forget you cut the root and the one inch of the top off the leek and a little and then cut the root off the leek and now cut it down the middle, the whole length of the leek so you can unravel it to take the dirt or the sand that settles into the deeper leaves and clean it out. Now I can cut the leek in half or a third with the onion and fit that in my Vitamix blender and lay a little soup liquid in there because remember the onion and leeks have that alienase enzyme. You don't wanna cook the onion or the leek first. You wanna blend it while it's still raw. Don't forget once you form the organosulfide compounds, once you form the isothiocyanates from the green cruciferous vegetables, they're heat stable in the soup. The soup would have prevented their formation 
because you would have deactivated the enzymes before the chemical reaction took place. But once the you get the chemical reaction that takes place in the blender, that makes it this anti-cancer soup because we're maintaining the viability and the formation of the anti-cancer compounds. So you, now you hook the onion and you made your, remember you made your form sulfenic acid and made your eyes burn and tear, keep the, the blender away from you and put, you know, make it smooth and pureed. Now pour that into the soup to cook. And now by this point, your peas are softened enough to split peas cooking in a separate pot. You don't have to cook, change your, change, you know, um, clean the blender, just pour your split peas and the water that the split piece of cooking on into the blender and add a little bit of nuts in there, a little bit of cashews and, and hemp seeds to add a little creaminess in the mouthfeel, add a delicious flavor of the soup and let that blend down into a puree in the blender and let that smooth and creamy and then pour that into the soup. So the beans are staying lumpy in the soup. <coughs> now you can start to add the mushrooms, your chopped mushrooms, and I recommend people use shiitake mushrooms, cut off the little dirt nib on the stem, but use the whole stem and the whole cap using your shiitake mushroom and one other mushroom. You want to use two types of mushrooms, shiitake and one other, shiitake and oyster, shiitake and trumpet, shiitake and white button, shiitake and lion's mane, shiitake and... Um, so in other words, pick your shiitake mushrooms with that chewy mouthfeel and pick some other mushrooms for the anti-cancer variety right? And then you chop them up small and add that to your soup and cover your pot. And then you can add a little bit of nutritional yeast or veggie zest, your, your plant seasonings. You don't want to use too much. Um, if you're using something like Mrs. Dash, which has pepper in it, you don't want to use too much pepper. There's so many competing delicious flavors in this soup. You don't want to make it too peppery or spicy. You make just enough Mrs. Dash so there's a hint of barely detectable pepper because you want that full different symphony orchestra of different flavors playing in your mouth. And then you, you're, by this point, it took you about an hour to make the soup, but you need to cook it for another hour on a low flame so the beans get very soft. You want your soup to cook for a full two hours. You want the beans to be under low boiling heat on a low boil and a low flame for a full two hours to get maximally soft. Then you can eat that dinner that from that soup and take this giant pot of soup you just made and I clean out a shelf in my refrigerator, put a dish towel then on the shelf. I put the hot, the warm bowl of soup in the refrigerator, close it up. And the next day, the all leftover soup that's now cold, I now can take out of the soup refrigerator and I can aliquot it out into various containers for the week, even plastic containers. I didn't want to put hot soup into plastic, but I can put now that it's cold, I can put it into my plastic containers to take it so people can take it to work with them. Or you can just put it in glass containers, or you can put it in individual containers that you freeze, or you can usually, we don't really freeze much of it because it, people eat it in the next three or four days. You know, it's always gone. We don't ever, it's never like more than three or four days. It's gone because it's so delicious. And I'm not saying to you that obviously that you, you can make different soups, one with more cabbage, one with more split peas, different types of squash soups and all types of different soups, but you still understand this basic principle of how do you make the soup by the beans cooking in the water first, you're doing the juicing second, you blending the onion and the green into your soup, and then you add the mushroom. Okay, so glad you're getting a good understanding of that. And because we're eating, having people eat a lot of beans, chilies are a great thing to use. Cooked tomatoes and peppers in with chilies are great things. We use, I usually take that extra firm tofu and I freeze it in the, in the freezer first. And I take it out of the freezer. And then when it thaws, crumble it. And it forms like a chopped meat like consistency where it's more rubbery and you can mix it in with your rest of your ingredients, a little bit of chili powder. The secret ingredient is, is cinnamon, right? A little cinnamon in your chili, not that, don't make it that spicy. Add a little bit of those little currants to sweeten it. The currants do great with the beans and a little bit of almond butter in there. So, or you use just garlic nutter, the garlic nutter you made that's sitting in your refrigerator that has the nuts and the, gar and the roasted garlic in there or you could roast garlic and put a little almond butter in or take a garlic nutter. But of course, making a great chili is an important part of a nutritarian diet and people love it. And then desserts, you know, most of our desserts we eat and most of the desserts I eat are just like some frozen cherries at the beginning of the meal. 
as I started eating my dinner, I took some frozen cherries or frozen mango or frozen jackfruit or frozen, you know, something good out of the refri or frozen mixed berries out of the freezer. It's the time I get to the dinner part of the meal, it's like partially defrosted. It's not like you just took it out of the freezer and you're eating an ice cube fruit. It's not totally at room temperature either. So it makes it feel like you're eating ice cream. And then occasionally we'll have some kind of, you know, fancy or dessert, like a black, black bean brownie. We mix some beans with some dates and almond butter and natural cocoa powder and chia seeds with, a, with an avocado icing or making another delicious type of dessert. Sometimes we have a little bit of a, a, a carrot cake or a papaya type sub thing in there. 